What is contrast anyway? Basically, contrast is just the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts of your image. The greater the difference, the higher the contrast. Of course, there are also concepts like color contrast, but we will leave that out for today and stick to the basic idea of contrast. There are many ways to achieve contrast in Final Cut Pro. The easiest one would be applying an instance of color adjustments, because there you have a dedicated contrast slider. And if you play around with that, it actually does a pretty good job. But if you know me, you know my next question. That is, what's going on under the hood? To test this, we will go to our grayscale. You can see we go from black on the left to white on the right. If I apply an instance of color adjustments and play around with the contrast, you can see that yes, the bright parts get brighter and the dark parts get darker. However, we can see that there's a little bit more going on. If I drag the contrast down, for example, you can see that this line curves. Weird, isn't it? Because we started out with a straight line. That means this contrast slider doesn't respond linearly. Additionally, if I drag it to the extremes, we can see that there is a point where the contrast moves around. And this is about 27, 30-ish IRE, because the line just rotates around there. Okay, this contrast slider looks good, but we gained two insights. It responds in a non-linear fashion, and it has a pivot at around 30 IRE. There's nothing wrong with this contrast slider. However, you will find yourself in situations where you need a linear response or where you need to be able to adjust the pivot point. So let's get rid of the color adjustments and have a look at my contrast plugin. You can see that you have a basic contrast slider, which makes bright things brighter and dark things darker if you want to increase the contrast or dark things lighter and bright things darker to decrease the contrast. As touched on before, the pivot is the point where bright things get brighter and dark things get darker. So let's have a look at how it looks if we adjust the pivot. I will increase the contrast and now let's play around with the pivot. If I increase the pivot to around 0.8, logically the pivot would be around 80 IRE. I will just drag this line here to have a visual anchor and if we play around with the contrast, sure enough, it rotates around ADIRE. Let's set the pivot to around, I don't know, 25 or something. This now means that the contrast pivots around 25 IRE. Being able to adjust the pivot is crucial. You will see why in a little bit. Let's reset this. If I increase the contrast again, underneath you can see that we can choose luminance only, which doesn't make sense to activate now because we are using a black and white image. So I will show you this in the next example and smooth contrast. And here we can dictate whether or not we want a linear or non-linear response. If smooth contrast is active, you can see that the response is non-linear. If I increase the contrast a little bit, it looks an awful lot like the S-curve you apply with the color curves. This is no coincidence. But we are not grading test images, we are grading real footage. So let's have a look at the contrast plugin here. I apply the contrast plugin and you can see I can adjust the contrast in a linear fashion. And you can see the pivot is around 50 IRE because everything at 50 stays in place and everything above and underneath will move. There is one more thing I want to touch on with the pivot. I will add an instance of color wheels before the contrast plugin and we will pretend that this clip is a little bit underexposed. If I now increase the contrast, you can see that we are just crushing our blacks. This is because the pivot is at 50 IRE. But this is the thing, our footage is underexposed. Therefore, we would need to stretch it in another region, which means the pivot must be much lower. Let's say I want to apply this amount of contrast, but as you can see, we are absolutely hammering our blacks here. Now, let's decrease the pivot until everything falls into legal range. Of course, if you pay attention to the top and the bottom, I went a little bit too far with the contrast, so I might have to dial it back. But in general, you get the idea. Next, I will go pretty far with the contrast to show you luminance only. If you pay attention to the vector scope, applying contrast will always increase saturation. If you don't want that, you can go to luminance only. If I enable this, you can see that the saturation does not change no matter how much I play around with the contrast. If I disable luminance only, you can see that the image gets instantly more saturated. Let's reset this again and have a look at the nonlinear response. I will enable smooth contrast. And yeah, with smooth contrast, you should be very careful because as I've shown you earlier, if we enable smooth contrast and increase the contrast, the pivot will get quite steep and a steep curve always indicates that you're stretching your image quite a bit. So if you're working with 8-bit footage or in general drone footage or weaker footage, you might risk breaking it or it just looks like shit. So let's have a look at what we can do here. I enable smooth contrast and I will increase the contrast. Yeah, it's not too awful, but this piece of footage is not very robust. So I wouldn't recommend using smooth contrast here. Lastly, if you're sitting there going, 
but but curves I have to disappoint you because Final Cut Pro's curves have some special traits. Let's put up the color curves. I could have a three minute rant about the Preserve Luma checkbox alone, but I will leave that for another day. Basically, what you need to know, if you're adjusting contrast with the curve, you won't increase saturation. Remember, if we increase the contrast with the contrast plugin, we also increase saturation. However, no matter how much I work with the Luma curve, the vector scope stays in place. Of course, you have the most control when using curves. However, this is something you should keep in mind. So if you try to linearize log footage, you might want to adjust the saturation separately. To prove my point, I recorded a color checker. As you can see, both clips are in fact the same shots and one is corrected with color curves. So this is before, this is after, and one is corrected using color wheels. This is before, this is after. I tried to match them as close as possible, but it's pretty obvious that the version corrected with the curves has a considerable amount less saturation than the version I corrected using color wheels.